Good morning. It's Tuesday morning, and it's a beautiful morning here in Maryland. And I'm just going to tell you something. I am super stoked about uh, what God has been dealing with me this morning, laying on my heart. This dog needs a haircut. Hey, doggy. Um, let me just tell you, today we're going to look at the word able. The word able. Not the man's name, but the word able. It's an adjective. Uh, it's a pronoun. Uh, sometime, no, it's not a pronoun, but it's an adjective. All right, so look at the word able. Write that down on your tablet or whatever it is that you use when you're taking notes. And it, the word able, and this is the first time in my life I think I've ever been reading uh, just the dictionary definition of a word and just got so excited. Uh, I was just beside myself. Now, listen to this. Because the word able, when we're, we're going to use it today as, you know, um, an adjective describing God. I mean, he is able. God is able. What is he? He is able. And when you look at the word able and the definition of it, listen to this because I've just, I've just about been shouting over the definition of this word. Happy birthday, Agnes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. The first one, having sufficient power. I mean, that in itself right there. All right. Sufficient. That means enough. That means enough. God has sufficient power. Then the next one is skill. Sufficient power or skill. All right. If God is able, and he is, and you believe that, whoop, and you believe he's able, then think about this. He's not only got the power, he has the skill and then it says he has the resources to do, and look at this word, something, something. So whatever it is in your life that is going on right now that you feel is kind of out of your control, kind of out of your situation, I want you to write that word down. Don't write out the whole description. Uh, you can do that later, but right now, whether it be finances or health or uh, a child or uh, some situation, whatever the situation is in your life, I want you to write that word down. And then every time I say something during this definition, I want you to just put a circle around it because that's your something. That's your something. And so I'm going to tell you that God is able because he has sufficient power. So draw a little arrow pointing to that thing in your life and just put uh, power. He's got the power to take care of whatever that something is in your life. Now, I'm, I'm going to get to scriptures, I promise, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove you in scripture, but right now, I'm proving to you out of Merriam-Webster's dictionary that God is able. God is able. So, if you draw a circle around your something, and then you draw an arrow going into it that says power. Power, power, P-O-W-E-R, power. All right, then it says skill. So God has the skill, that God has the skill to do that something, to perform that miracle. I, I'm going to show you other scripture. I am going to get to the scripture, but listen to this. Or the resources to do something. Does God have resources? All, everything, all all resources belong to him. All, uh, anything that you need, anything that you desire, anything that nature needs, anything that n needs anything, something, he has the resources to take care of it. Um, I, I saw this morning on Facebook, somebody said, so, you are given $50,000. But your only thing is you have to give it to somebody else. Who do you give it to? And I was like, $50,000. What would I do if I had $50,000? Think of, think of the things I could do. And, and then I was thinking on some of those things. Some of that would be a drop in the bucket. You know, can I give it to multiple people? Can I do this? Can I do that? And no, I don't have $50,000. So, Dion, yeah. I, gosh, Dion, you just... 
predictable, darling. And so this is having the resources to do something. Now, look at this second definition. Look at this second definition. And this is just straight out of Merriam, Merriam Webster, Webster, Webster. Having the freedom or opportunity to do something. Having the freedom to do something. Now, let me tell you this. If that's something that you wrote down on your piece of paper, if you're something, you know, it's on this piece of paper, and you're like me, and, and you're saying, I want to give this to God, but I can't let it go. I just can't. I can't stop holding on to it. All right, Max. You have to be a good boy. It says, I want to have this taken care of, but I don't want to let it go. This says God, doesn't say God, but we're using God because God is in everything. He's in Merriam-Webster too. If, if God has control, if God has the freedom to be in control of that something, it says he has the freedom or opportunity to do something. That's what freedom is. That's what ability is. When we give that thing to God, then we put it in God's hands, and he has the opportunity and the freedom to take it out of our hands because we've opened our hands and we've given that thing to him, and he changes it from this clutched up little stinky piece of paper into a beautiful flower or into something else because every something God has the ability to take care of. I, I like that. Every something... Every, every something God has the ability to take care of. Every something. He has the ability and he has the freedom to take care of if we commit it to him. If we commit it to him. Then it says the third definition, and again, I'm just out of Webster's, having a quality or nature to do something. Look at every definition. There's one more, but every definition has something in it. The word something in it. It says having a quality or nature to do something. It is God's nature, God's nature to do things in our life. It is God's nature to do these things in our life. He wants to do these things in our life. He wants to have that. He wants to have that freedom. He wants to have that opportunity in your life because he already has the power, the skill, and the resources for whatever we are asking for. Whatever our something is, God has the quality and the nature to do it. I mean, listen, I was thinking this morning as I was writing these definitions down, this will preach, girl. This will preach. I'm telling you, when we look at when we look at uh, definitions, or when we look at the qualities of God, or when we look at the attributes of God, when we look at the characteristics of God, then we have to rejoice and be glad because this tells us He's able. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not able to do so many of these things. That's why we all have some things in our life. Some things in our life. All of us do. And if you're sitting there saying, you know what? I really don't have any something in my life. Well, then I'm asking you to pray for the rest of us because we have to remember and we have to know that God is able because our lives are full of some things. Some things. Having a quality. Now, listen to this last definition. Number four, having a quality or nature that makes something possible. Having a quality or nature that makes something possible. We just read in definition three that having a quality or nature to do something. So he not only is able to do something, but with him it's possible. 
we're looking at these some things in our life and these some things in our life seem just wrong and they seem miserable and uh, it's bringing confusion into our life. It's bringing sorrow into our life. It's bringing doubt into our life because we have all of these some things. But this is telling me out of Webster's Dictionary not to worry about that because God has the quality or nature and he makes something possible and then he does it. He does it. How on earth am I going to do this? How on earth am I going to go through this? Well, I'm going to tell you how you are because you have God in your life and therefore he has the freedom and the opportunity to work in your life. He has the sufficient power, skill, or resources to do something. Look at 2 Corinthians 9, 8. That was Webster, but now I'm going to show you God's word. Look at 2 Corinthians 9, 8. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. Just jot that down. I'm going to go ahead and read. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. <clears throat> and God is able. Say that. And God is able. Now, this is not Webster anymore. This is the Bible. So, this is Webster's is, you know, a, a proven word. Uh, you know, you can go there for, for their definitions. Um, and, and then I want you to look at God's word because it has been proven to give us encouragement and give us hope. But it says, and God is able. Now that's a mic drop right there. But listen to what he is able to do to bless you abundantly. Now this uh, Webster is, I'm referring to my notes here. Webster says it's sufficient. It's sufficient. God's word says abundantly, abundantly, abundantly. That means you don't have just exactly what you need, which would be all, it, all we need. Exactly what we need, that's what we need. But this is saying, but then this goes abundantly. So then in all things, listen, at all times, having all you need. Huh. Abundantly. So that in all things, now we've written our something. And so if we put all of our somethings together, it would be in all these things, in all these things. Maybe you weren't able to think of just one. Maybe your mind is so overwhelmed with, I've got so many thumps, some things I, I need in my life, you know. But this is saying it doesn't matter because it's abundant in all things at all times times having all you need you will abound in every good work because it is written they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor this is of course taken from psalms 1 12 and 9 they have freely scattered gifts to the poor their righteousness endures forever now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to god you know what you don't have an abundance so you can sit at home and say look Look at all the abundance I've got. Look at, look at all this abundance I've got. It's for you to share it out, for you to give out, for you to make sure that you are scattering your gifts to the poor. When I said that about the $50,000, you know, I, I was thinking about, of course, I was thinking about Smoky Mountain Children's Home. I was thinking about our church. I was thinking about our school. And then I started to talk, thinking about individuals that, $50,000 would be uh, life-changing. I mean, for anybody, $50,000, $50,000. But this is saying, you know what? They freely scattered their gifts to the poor. So we shouldn't even think, if I had $50,000, I would do this, 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 this for, for my life or for, you know, for my house or my family. Uh, Steve and I paid $26,000 for our first home. It was a nice, nice, nice house. Marlene and Jackie spent many, many, many hours in that house. Sherry and Sally somewhat lived in that house. $26,000. And when we sold it, we thought we were millionaires because 
$26,000 is what we sold it for. $50,000, $100,000, $20, $10. This says that God is going to supply our need, not just sufficient, but abundantly, abundantly in all things, at all times, having all that you need, having all that you need. I, I know sometimes we think, I know sometimes we think, I feel like God has skipped over me. But this assures us, this ensures us, and this is, by the way, under the heading in my Bible, generosity encouraged, generosity encouraged. But instead, we're looking at it this morning as this encourages me, this touches my heart, because this is, this is saying to me, I think it's the trash, guys. No, somebody, somebody left something at the door. Hans, come here, buddy. This is saying to us, God supplies all my needs. He takes care of me. He supplies my needs, and then he expects me to let other people catch in that overflow. Catch in that overflow. It's not enough. Max, Hans. Tuesday is trash day for us. Tuesday is trash day for us. Last week, I forgot to put it out because Friday is trash day for me in Tennessee. And I could not figure out why people had their treasure. Hans, come here. Come here, boy. Come here. Sorry. When we look at what God is doing in our lives, and it's abundant, and it's above, and it's a beyond, which we're going to get to in just a minute. It says he is able, he is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So he's saying, you know what? I'm going to supply your needs and then I'm going to give you an abundance so that you can go out and supply. I'm going to give you seed. I'm going to give you bread so that you can go out and share with others. Then look at Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Ephesians just one over. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. We can't even imagine it. We can't even imagine it. I mean, we pray for these things. We pray for these somethings in our life. And then it says in Ephesians 6, 20. Thank you, Jeannie. Uh, Ephesians 3, 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably. That means you can't even measure the abundance of how he's going to supply your need. You can't even measure it. There's, there's no measuring thing available. There's no amount of measurement that can say, this is what God is doing in my life. All right. According to, now look at this, his power. What did we just say a while ago? Power is what goes into that something and pierces it and changes it. But look at what it says, into the power that works within us. That works within us. If the power goes off here at the house, I can plug things into receptacles as much as I want to, but it will not change the outcome. If the power source is off, you can plug in, plug in, plug in, and it doesn't matter because there is no power source. This is saying, I'm giving you a power source, guys, and all you have to do is tap into it, then I'm gonna let that current run through you and into these somethings that are in your life. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. It says, to him who is able. To him who is able. I'm going to give God all the glory because of his power working through me. I'm going to give God all the glory because of his power that is sourced through me and then into these somethings in my life, into these somethings in other people's lives. That's why 
when we lay hands on people, sometimes, and when we lay hands on people and pray for him, so, sometimes I can actually feel a current that surges through me. And please don't act, don't, please don't act like I'm being super spiritual because I'm telling you the truth. There are times when I've laid hands on people and you know it too. And you feel that power of God working through you. It's not a magical thing. It's not something that you pay for. It's something that you live your life right. And God uses that power that is in him to go through you and to go through to make sure that you are able to do abundantly above and beyond these things that your mortal body tells you to do. We're changed. We're changed. Once we allow that power to come through us, if your power has been off and then it comes on, you know, the air conditioning is like, and then it's up again. And then the same, you know, the power, the lights are immediately on. And, you know, uh, the dishwasher starts, and the washing machine starts, the dryer starts, you know, all of these things change once that power comes on. And it certainly is God is going to allow that power to certainly move through us, through us. Now look at 2 Timothy 1.12. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, I can't believe what time it is. That's all right. I'll still be on fire tomorrow and you will too. All right, 2 Timothy 1, 12. Second, that's 1 Timothy. 2 Timothy 1 and 12. All right, look at 2 Timothy 1, 12. There I am. <clears throat> It says, this, that is why I am suffering as I am. And wait a minute, look at 11. And as of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. He's able to guard it. Well, I mean, whatever he has entrusted to us, whatever we have entrusted to him, he's able to guard it. He's able to take care of it. it says, I'm convinced. Paul is saying, you know what? I've, I've seen it in my life, and I've been through suffering because of it, and I've been through persecution because of it. But here's what I know. He's able God is able to take care of it because I know who I have believed and I am convinced that he is able to guard. What about unsaved children? I'm convinced he is able to guard. What about our finances? I am convinced he is able to guard. What about our family? I am convinced he is able to guard that these things, that these some things that I'm just barely hanging on to and I feel like, that something is just hanging by a thread. Well, this is saying he's able to guard it. I'm convinced that if I put that in his hand, he is able to guard it. Even if I drop it, look how big his hand is. Look how little my hand is. In his hand, if I drop it, he's, he catches it. He guards it. He protects it. He changes it. He moves it. I'm convinced he is able. He has that quality. He has that freedom. He has that opportunity. He has the power. He has the resources to do that. And he has the skill. He knows what to do. I will read in the Amplified. Thank you, Terry. All right. Now look at Romans 16, 25. Romans 16, 25. Romans 16, 16, 16, 25. 1625. Now to him who is able. This is the benediction. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel. Now to him who is able. Is what we just said. I'm giving all of these things to him who is able. 
I'm telling you that he is, he's willing, he's able, he has the power, he has the skill, he has the know-how, he has the resources, he has the opportunity, he has the freedom, he has the quality, he has the nature, all of these things. He is able. He's able. He is the epitome of the definition able. He is the epitome of that. Then in Matthew 9, 28, it says, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Matthew 9, 28. Do you believe that I am able to do this? Look at that word believe. Look at that word believe. Now, I underlined it in my Bible. Matthew 9, 28. Do you, this is Jesus talking. This is Jesus looking around and he's talking and he says, do you believe that I am able? Because here's the thing, whether or not you believe it, he is able. Whether or not you know about it, he has the skill. Whether or not you have any concept of who God is, it still doesn't change the fact that he has all of these things. So now the question to all of us is, but do you believe it? But do you believe it? Oh, T.D. Jakes, he sure believes that. But do you believe it? Janice Lowry definitely believes that. Yeah, but do you believe it? Do you believe it, Joyce? Do you believe it, Terry? Jeannie, do you believe it? Because until you believe it, you have not tapped into that power. Until you believe it, you cannot plug into that power. Until you believe it, it's, it's not yours to wait, stand and wait for. Until you believe it. Do you believe it? Do you believe that it's possible for him to do these things? Do you believe that it's possible to commit these things into his hands? Dion, do we believe that we can commit our children and our grandchildren and our family members into his hands? And that he will take care of it, not just take care of it, Bertha, but Bertha, he takes care of it, abundance. Abundance. I mean, overflow. <laughs> I mean, like... If I was standing outside, you know, it's not just a little bit, but it's the overflow. It's the abundance. It's the more than I can think or believe. It's the, I'm expecting a dollar in the mail and somehow I get a million dollars in the mail. I'm expecting. I'm looking for it. I'm believing that God's abundance God's abundance, and I shouldn't have used the word million dollars because I'm going to tell you, my something is not money. My something is not money. I, my finances are covered. My finances are protected. I have other somethings in my life that right now <coughs> are much more important to me than finances, are much more important to me than silver or gold. I'm asking for God's blessings in my life. I'm asking for an abundance. I'm asking that though they were dead, they will live again. That though it's an emergency situation, that though it's urgent care, you see, when they started talking to us about Steve going to another hospital, John got on the phone, our son John got on the phone with him, me, and, and John is my encourager. And uh, he said, Mom, do they have Dad on a, on a helicopter? Do they have him, you know, uh, are there, is there a team rushing around? Are they hooking him up to equipment? Are they rushing him up to surgery? And I was like, no, 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 none of that, none of that. And he said, well, then, Mom... They're just trying to figure out what's going on. You see, when we have these things in our life that we think, gosh, this is an emergency, and yet we're thinking, wow, God's taking care of that. 
God's not scurrying around. He, God's not afraid. God's not saying, get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way, because I'm getting ready to strike down with a lightning rod. He's not. He's saying, I've got this. I've got this. You're okay. I'm going to send in abundance. What about if your something is a lack of joy? A lack of joy. God's got that. An abundance of joy. The other day, I was just so upset, and I was so worried about Steve, and we're in the middle of this move, and all of these things, and I allowed my mind to become overwhelmed. I did. I mean, I could not stop. I wasn't like crying, but, you know, it, I was just kind of leaking. You know, tears just, at, at every turn, I was working, I was praying for Steve, and, the, and, and all of these things were happening. And our grandson, Oscar, called me on FaceTime. And they're staying, they're over at the beach, you know, on this vacation that Steve and I were supposed to go on. And, and you know, we'll, we'll get to do that. We'll get to do that. But, uh, and that was another reason why I was just leaking, you know, here's um, uh, this vacation, which I had already paid for. And um, so anyway, I wasn't getting to do it. And so Oscar called me and he took me on a tour of their place. He took me on a tour of their place where they were staying. And I don't know if you've ever been on FaceTime with a little kid, but uh, it's, um, it's a wild ride because, you know, they have no concept of, um, uh, you know, here's, here's this and this and this, and you're like, oh, I'm about to throw up. And so then Oscar took me into the bathroom. And he, he pointed the phone down. He had his dad's phone. And he pointed it down to the toilet. And he said, Nanny, this is our toilet. This is our bathroom in this house. And I said, okay. And so then he picked up from the back of the toilet uh, a can of, this is not a can, but a can of um, air freshener. Air freshener was sitting on the back of the toilet. Now, I don't know if Cotron put that there or, you know, the people who own the place had left it. I don't know who put it there, but somebody put that there. And so Oscar uh, held up that can of bathroom freshener and he put the phone up right next to it. He said, now, Nanny, let me tell you what this is. And then he turned that right into his face so much that I could just see this much of his face. He said, Nanny, when you go gaga in the bathroom, you can use that. And I started laughing, guys, from deep down inside me. I could not stop. It was hilarious. I was being very careful because I didn't want him to think I was laughing at him. But it was so funny. So after we, after we hung up, uh, I went upstairs and Steve said, what on earth? I heard you down there laughing. And I said, Steve, let me just tell you what Oscar just told me. And it was, we were both just screaming, laughing. You see, he takes that. My something that day was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. I could have written down on a piece of paper. I'm just overwhelmed, just so much. But then... God, in his abundance and overflow, had that little three-year-old call me and say, Nanny, do you know what this is in our bathroom? I love it. I love how God can take everyday situations and show you, I'm able. I'm able. I'm able. God, I thank you today because you are able. I thank you today that you've reminded us that you have the resources, you have the skills, and you have the power. And it is your nature and your quality to work that power through us so that, Lord, that we are able to move through your power, through your abilities, through your skills, through your knowledge, through your wisdom, Lord, that you put that power within us and that dunamis power just explodes into existence 
And therefore, Lord, we can put our somethings into your hand. We can put everything into your hand. Because, Lord, once we put our something, our everything into your hands, it becomes changed and it becomes new and it becomes abundance. It becomes sufficient to meet our needs and the needs of the people around us. God, give us the ability to see that power in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, you guys have a good day. I don't have any doctor appointments today. I don't have any place I have to be today. So I'm going to sit out there in the sun and work on my tan today. Yes, I've got tons to do on this house, but you know what? It'll be there tomorrow. I know it will. God bless you. I love you. I am so excited today. Bye-bye.